Today on episode 96 of the podcast, we're talking about the things you can lose and the things you can gain when you're facing sight loss. What's up, VIPs? Welcome to Life After Sight Loss Radio, the podcast helping you discover life after sight loss. My name is Derek. I am your resident VIP, aka visually impaired person, and I'm joined across the table by our resident sighted supporter, my lovely wife, April. Hey there. All right. So today we're talking about the things you can lose and the things you can gain. Now, this conversation, as I was talking to you before we started recording, it's about the things, the possibility of things, right? you know, possibility of losing, possibility of gaining. And so as we go through these, you might immediately have this reaction of like, oh, what are you saying? It's like, no, stick with us through the whole thing, because that will be the important part of the conversation. Uh, This week might be a little bit of a, I don't know, a heavier topic. Last week we talked about kitchen hacks and Mm -hmm. cutting our finger and whatnot. (laughs) This one might be a bit of a heavier topic, but you know what? That's all right. We got to balance it out. So let's jump right into things. We're going to start with the things that you can lose. Okay. That you can lose. I got just a few things here. Number one, your dreams, your dreams. I mean, imagine if you're going through life, whenever you lose your sight, you've got dreams of doing these great and wonderful things. And all of a sudden sight loss comes along and says, Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. You're not going to be doing that anymore because now you can't see and your life is over. Uh, So that's the thing. Dreams. Number two is independence. You know what? You're going to have a lack of independence. You're you're not going to be able to do anything for yourself and you're going to have to depend on other people. You can lose independence. Uh, Three, you can lose access to certain things, access to the world around you, access to computers, access to phones, access to things you want to do. You can lose access to things, especially things that you always had access to. And number four, you can lose identity. You know, I don't even know who I am anymore. I, I totally knew who I was. I was confident. And now I've lost my sight and I don't know who I am. So those are some things that I thought about that people can lose when they go through sight loss. However, here's the thing. It's a can lose. It's a might lose. It's a lose for a certain period of time until you work on it. Yeah. For example, dreams. I mean... I have always enjoyed performing, you know, like I really enjoy getting up, singing, dancing, whatever, looking like a fool. But, <laughs> you know, sight loss really halted that at first. Yeah. It was like, I'm this is done, you know, and I don't do it right now currently, not because of sight loss, but because just life in general, you know, we got kids and work and, you know, all the things. Yep. But I have performed as a visually impaired person. Yeah. And, you know, I, that that is something that can happen. So you don't have to lose your dreams. And on, on the other thing, you know, like, have you seen where maybe those things were lost and then either were regained or, or are regaining or something like that? Have you seen that in our lives? Yeah, I think I have. I And I think it it isn't so much losing. It's just it's changing. Mm. So it's changing the way you're going to achieve your dreams or your goals. Mm -hmm. And it's also, you know, you may notice any time in your life, it doesn't matter when you've lost your sight, whether you are a kid or a teenager or an older person, you know, you still have dreams and Mm -hmm. the way you achieve those dreams is just going to be different now. Yeah. And finding that way and finding how to achieve those with your sight loss is the next step. Right. Absolutely. And and it kind of like with uh, access to things. You know, I use a phone, but I use a screen reader on my phone. Right. Now you might think like, well, I didn't have to use a screen reader before. Like this is too hard. It's too challenging. I, I don't want to, you know. Yeah, but I still have access to my phone. Right. And if you don't the use reader. the screen reader, are you able to use your phone? Absolutely. Like, do you want to be able to use your phone or not? Yeah. And it's, it's something where you think, okay, I've lost access to it and I can't get it back. Well, you can't get it back. It's just going to be through a different door right. or climbing through this window, yeah. you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, but it is a challenge that you have to kind of go through yeah. because like, well, this isn't a hurdle I had before. Mm-hmm. Sight loss caused me to have this hurdle. It's like, yeah, that's, that's fair. You know, you definitely have that hurdle now, but you can use it. It's just going to be in a different way. And yeah. the other thing, identity is so important. Uh, and I've talked about this on a video before. You know, it's so easy to be like, well, I'm this, or I do my job, or I have my family. Or I, this is my identity. And all of a sudden, it's like, well, I'm a blind person. I'm a visually impaired person. I'm th- that's all I am now. I have no idea. All that other identity is gone. It's like, it's not gone. Not, yeah. It's just this visually impaired part is sort of just added onto it. Right. Yes, I'm a visually, you know, and, and some people will use person first language. Like, I'm a person with visual impairment. And that's fine if that is important to you. Mm-hmm. But I like to say, you know, I'm a visually impaired person. 
person. I sing, I act, I speak, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a, you know, yeah. it's, you know, it's just part of my identity Exactly. Now. It's, it's not all of your identity. It's yeah. just added to. Yeah, absolutely. We didn't, so, I didn't lose their other. I just gained this part, which look, gaining sight loss and being a vision impaired person may not be your idea of gain, mm-hmm. you know, but the truth is that it's just now part of the book of your life. If you right. Will. So go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have a, a thought on the oh, independence yes. as mm-hmm. well. So as a sighted supporter, it is important to help the VIP be as independent as possible. Yeah. And in that, that is holding them accountable, holding them accountable mm-hmm. to doing daily activities, to continuing to go to work, um, you know, finding ways that they can use what site they have or any tools or um, accessibility features on their phone or computer or whatever, learning how to do those things. Now, there are plenty of organizations out there that are going to help them Mm -hmm. um, adapt, but at the same time, holding them accountable to using those things because, I mean, we've talked about before, you know, Derek sets a cup down and he forgets that it's there. Sometimes I'll go and pick it up and I'll take it to the kitchen and rinse it out, put it in the dishwasher. But other times I'm like, you left this cup over here. Can you please pick that up? And, And it's like, I know that's, maybe not a substantial example, but at the same time, it's it's something that's holding them accountable mm-hmm. to continue doing the things that they did before they lost their sight as well. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping them independent as possible so that they, you know, feel good about themselves and also it's not putting more work on you as a sighted supported Definitely. either. Definitely. And I think it's such a balance of um, grace and understanding and truth and, you know, accountability. Absolutely. Because it's like, yeah, if you just lost your sight yesterday and you woke up and can't see, Mm -hmm. that's going to be huge adaptation and things to go through. But it's been, you know, 20 plus years for me. I need to pick the cup up. Like that's, that's, I don't have that anymore. And so uh, we have to, uh, I think as sighted supporters, you have to have that balance of grace and understanding and accountability and truth because you, you need them both. You won't lose, you will lose some independence, but if you're never working towards regaining anything and you're not sort of pushed a little bit, right. you won't have anything and that's not good. Yeah. So let's jump into the things you can gain. Why don't you read off this list for us, dear? All right. So first we have patience. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that is something that is definitely a gain. Gratitude, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. understanding, and perspective. So, yeah, absolutely. Now, again, these are things that you can gain, just like the things that you can lose. Mm -hmm. These are things that you can gain if you work on it, Um, because maybe you're not any of these things, but now maybe you can be these things. So, for example, patience. I think in our family, you often say, like, I'm a fairly patient person. You are, Um, not me. I I don't say that. Derek is patient. She says that about me. Yes. Yeah, we'll be clear, Uh, which I am until I'm not. I, you know, (laughs) I think we all hit those points. But, yeah, uh, learning to be patient because for example i have to sit and wait for someone to come pick me up you right. know whether it's an uber or a friend or whatever i have to sit and wait a lot of times mm-hmm. or i have to be patient uh, you know if i'm at a buffet it's hard to go up and do it on my own right. because of my limited vision so i have to make sure somebody else is going and so i may have to wait like well they're not done yet and so you know i just have to wait and that seems like insignificant things but the totality of those things builds up and teaches you patience now it yeah. can teach you to be impatient and yell at everybody but it can also if you lean into it like you know what i'm learning to be patient in these moments yeah um yeah. you know with gratitude like gratitude is something I think we're always working on. And sometimes we just have to write it down. Like, here's the things I'm thankful for. Yeah. Because the things I'm upset about can outweigh that list sometimes. Mm-hmm. So we have to continually work on that gratitude list. I'm I'm grateful that I can still do a lot of the things that I can do, whatever that might be. You know, I'm grateful that I can set up all this podcast junk and we can talk yeah. and share and people can learn from this. Like, I'm grateful for that. And being visually impaired has taught me gratefulness because it's like, you know, you never know how much... Uh, something is important to you until it's not there anymore. Right. And so you appreciate the things that you do have. Understanding, like, we, you know, being an understanding person saying, you know what? I'm going through something. I bet somebody else is going through something. So yeah. I'm going to give them a little grace, a little understanding, <laughs> uh, you know, even though I don't want to, <laughs> even though they're driving me nuts. I want to give them a little understanding. 
And then perspective, perspective on things that life is not one, not all about you. Right. And two, not all about what you're going through. Sometimes you just got to have a perspective of like things got to go on or you might have a good perspective on somebody else going through something we talked about with understanding. So there's all kinds of things that you can gain by being a visually impaired person if you're working on gaining those things in your life. Any thoughts as we roll through that? Um, I think these all apply to decided supporter as well as the VIP for sure. Um, You know, I definitely, like I've said, I'm not the most patient person, but I feel like as we've gone through our relationship over the last 20 plus years that my patience has grown Mm -hmm. because I will be you know, if you're trying to do something on your own, I want, I'm a fixer. I want to just get in there and do it for you. But at the same time, it's like, you know what? I have to be patient and let him do it on his own. And if he asks for help, then I'll help him. Um, you know, being understanding, you know, you might have good days and bad days with your sight Mm -hmm. and with your emotional, you know, I mean, grieving you're right. It's a, we talked about this yesterday. It's a daily reminder that you have lost your sight because Mm -hmm. you wake up every morning and you don't have your sight. So that grief doesn't necessarily go away in time and you have good days and bad days. So sure. being understanding about emotional ups and downs and, um, and that sort of thing, um, perspective from, I guess it goes with understanding for a sighted supporter, being understanding about the perspective that they have and trying to kind of put myself in your shoes at times and think about how your life has changed and then how our life has changed and kind of just look at it from your side of things. Mm-hmm. Like your like your sort of lack of independence in certain ways, like, you know, getting a ride to work and mm-hmm. um, you know, you can't just get up and go to the grocery store and grab something for me if I'm in the middle of making dinner, you right. know, like having that perspective of that that loss of that type of independence is you know, it's a good thing to have. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, when I think about gratitude, especially on the side of a a sighted supporter, um, it's good. And maybe this is a side note that I didn't have in the notes, but it's important to show gratitude on both sides. Hey, yeah. I'm grateful for your help. Mm-hmm. And on uh, you would think on the side of supporter side, like, well, it's, yeah, I'm grateful that they're doing things, but it's important to show that outwardly. Yeah, like I if, agree. You know, I think about yeah. something, for example, that if we're doing something and it's difficult, um, and we're going somewhere and it's like, oh, this is difficult for a visually impaired person, but as you know, what, I'm going to be with my family. So I'm going to do the thing or whatever. Yeah. It's important to show that, Hey, I'm really glad that you did this thing. Yeah. I'm, you know, that was really helpful. I know it was hard for you. Thank you for going out. That goes a long way, uh, of not number one for the side of supporter to be grateful, but then to show right. gratitude yeah. because then on the other side, it shows that visually impaired person like, oh, wow. Okay. This, this meant something. And not only meant something to me from the other person, but wow, this really is impactful to me too, mm-hmm. doing the thing, you know, with my family. So I think it's definitely a two-way street, yeah. as you talked about yeah. with uh, being a VIP and a sighted supporter for sure. So those are some things you can lose and some things you can gain. And we always like to focus on the positive around here. So we focus on that gain as much as we can. Remembering that there are negatives, as she said, uh, and just recently uh, we've dealt with, you know, grief over sight loss and dealing with emotions and having bad days. That's real. That is a real thing. But we always want to remember that while you're dealing with that, there are things on the other side as well that we have gained. So that brings us to our question today. What is one thing that you have gained because of losing your sight? It might be something on this list like gratitude or understanding. It might be a, a relationship that you've developed with somebody, a job that you got. Anything yeah. is possible. And so we want to hear about it. You can leave it on the comments of the video or send an email to lifeaftersightloss at gmail.com. All right. So before we get to our quote of the week, we've got just a few housekeeping items for you. That's right. And if you are watching us on YouTube, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss another single episode. That's right. And if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, make sure that you subscribe in your favorite podcast app and consider giving us a rating and a review. You can also share your thoughts and your questions by sending an email to lifeaftersightloss at gmail.com. And make sure to follow us on Instagram at Life After Sight Loss. That's right. All right. So here we go. We've got the quote of the week. So let's go ahead and take it away, dear. We learn, grow, and become compassionate and generous as much through exile as homecoming, as much through loss as gain, as much through giving things away as in receiving what we believe to be our due. David White. 
David White, he's, a, I think, a poet yes. um, and a speaker. Yeah. And that's a long quote. It is. It is it's, <laughs> so it's got some uh, interesting stuff in there. But he talks about the the balance between as much through exile as we do through homecoming. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, as much through loss as we do through gain. So we learn, we're learning, we're growing, which uh, I, I say all the time, like growth happens in the good times and in the bad times. You right. know? So yeah. you can learn and grow in the midst of sight loss. You can learn and grow in the midst of success. You can learn and grow in all those areas. And I like his quote because he says, we can learn and grow um, you know, as much in both yes. those areas yeah. you know, at the same time. So that's a good quote. It's a challenging one, but it's important to remember for sure. Yep. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening wherever you are. And remember that sight loss isn't the end. It's just the beginning. My name is Derek. And I'm April. And we'll see you in in the the next next one. one.